Good evening. Welcome to the Bible class, East Main Church of Christ. We just finished uh, Galatians, and we're going to get into Ephesians tonight. I say tonight because this morning I went in and did the 8.30 service uh, for the Lord's Supper and also the uh, 10 o'clock, so wasn't able to do it this morning, my normal time to put that together. It's usually between, uh, you know, 8 and 9 o'clock when I do the recording. And uh, so anyway, I was doing it late this evening. Uh, grab your Bibles. We're going to get into it right away. I guess I probably should set up Ephesians. Of course, uh, we don't have a whole lot of time for that. But the Apostle Paul wrote the letter to the church at Ephesus. Okay, Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, certainly from the first two verses here, we see that Paul is the one that's the author of Ephesians, and uh, he uses these common phrases that he uses, grace and peace to you from the God, our God, our, uh, from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He uses that a lot in his epistles. Um, we also see he's writing it to the saints, which there are at Ephesus. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we see that the word blessed, blessed or blessings three times in this verse here. Uh, we're so thankful that God has blessed us. He has, he has blessed all Christians. Uh, with spiritual blessings that are only found in Christ. And so we talked about how to be in Christ, to be uh, baptized into Christ uh, before in some of our previous studies. And so that's the only place that you find these spiritual blessings is in Christ. So if you're outside of Christ, you don't have the opportunity to experience these spiritual blessings, or you're not going to have them if you do not get into Christ. Verse 4, according he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So even before the foundation of the world, in the very beginning, before God spoke the world into existence. He chose Jesus to be our Savior. He knew that man would fall short and that we would need a Savior and that we would be holy as Christ is holy because we would be without blame before him in love. You see, what there's there, one of the qualifications for elders and deacons is to be without blame. Well, you know, nobody is technically without blame, right? We have all done something wrong. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we can be holy and without blame because we can forget forgiveness of our sins if we're in Christ. Verse 5, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. He has predestinated us. No, I mean, some people say, well, there's predestination. There's 144,000 that's going to heaven and seen the, the book of Revelation. And hey, if I'm not a part of that 144, if I'm not part of that predestination, there's nothing I can do. It's already been decided. 
Why should I do anything? That's wrong. That's that's not fact. What has been predestinated was that those that are in the church, those that are in the church are adopted as children by Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will. So God has adopted us because Jesus Christ shed his blood and, and is, uh, we can become a part of the church, which is his body, which we'll get into, Christ being the head of the body, the head of the church. So that is what is predestinated here, is that the church would be the adopted children. That was decided before. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. I love this verse right here. We, in, in whom we have redemption, we have redemption through Jesus Christ because of his blood, his blood that he sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. Because he done that for us, he gave himself for us, he willingly went to the cross. He sacrificed his life. He shed his blood. We can come in contact with that blood when we are baptized into Christ. And we come in this cleansing blood, this blood that cleanses and washes away our sins. Acts 22, 16. And we have this forgiveness of sins. In Acts 2, 38. For the remission of our sins. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. That's what it's for, this redemption. According to the riches of his grace. And I shared that with you last week. Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Grace. What expense was it? Well, the expense was that Jesus went to the cross. And we get to share in these riches, the riches of heaven, this riches of salvation, because God gave us his only begotten son. God's riches at Christ's expense, grace. You know, I remember back in when I was a boy, there they had these Coke bottles, and I, used, I love drinking Coke out of a bottle. I don't know. We used to get a Coke and a mum pie, and boy, I tell you what, that was the best thing. When you have one of them Cokes that come out of one of them uh, really cold, and you uh, boy, those things was good. And I don't know, I, you know, I've got them in a can before these little plastic bottles. It's not the same as getting a, a, a glass bottle that's got Coke in it. And I, I love those. Well, they used to have a five cent redemption on there because I guess the states didn't want people littering and uh, it was kind of a plan to, you had to return the bottles back in. I don't know if they refilled them or just trashed them and maybe uh, re melted the glass into something, I don't know. But anyways, you, you, there was a redemption on it. And, and the reason that they put this five cent redemption on it is because if they didn't, people would just pitch it out the window or throw it away and it would end up, you know, in a landfill or something. Uh, people wouldn't turn them back in. And we, we didn't have, uh, there wasn't all this, recycling wasn't even a term that we used very much. You know, nobody thought about recycling very much at that time. And so uh, when I think about redemption, it is something that God has given us and that he's going to come back and redeem. When I had this Coke bottle, I could turn this in and redeem this Coke bottle for the five cents. 
right? And so God has given us something, and he's going to redeem that. Now, we'll look in just a minute what he's given us. Uh, Whereat he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known un unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself. God has abounded uh, wisdom in us, all wisdom and prudence. He's given us the, the smarts to know what to do. He's made known unto us this mystery, which is the gospel that, you know what, that Jesus came down and died for all, and that we can be saved. You know, I've studied the Bible with several people, and, you know, atheism really just bothers me that people do not even think that there is a higher power. I can better understand that somebody thinks there's a higher power, but they got it confused on what the, the correct teachings are. But those that are atheists, I mean, you know, just open your eyes up and look around. You don't think there's a higher power that created this. Of course there is. Of course there is. It's this mystery of finding out what's the purpose of my life? What's the purpose of all of our lives? What is the purpose of us being here? Is it just to collect assets and then die? No. That, I mean, if that was it, I mean, life's not worth living. By the time you have any money, you're too old to spend it. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the truth? It, you know, even I hear these people, oh, I'm retired it you know, 37. Well, is this why you're doing all these videos and books? Because you still need money, I guess, to retire. And maybe they are, I don't know. It's just, you know, people just are just so focused on making money and money just a, is a focus of so many people's thoughts and minds that we need to look at our real retirement plan, which is heaven. Because if you're just waiting on this earth, I mean, you know, I, I've seen the, the about how long you can live. I don't know anybody that's over 100. Uh, I know several people that got right to 100 or maybe a year over uh, or maybe in their 90s. But, you know, a lot of some people, 70s. I've known people that died in their 50s, even younger. One of my best friends died when he was, 21. And so, you know, we don't know when we're going to go, when this life is over. But what we need to do is make sure that we are prepared to go to heaven. That in the dispensation, the fullness of times, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ. In Christ, here we go again. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in him again. So it's this church. Whenever God got good and ready, he sent Jesus down to the earth to be a uh, the perfect lamb, this perfect sacrifice. He Only he could come here and live a sin-free life. Only he could be this perfect sacrifice once and for all so that we could get forgiveness of our sins and so that we could go to heaven. That's the only way. And when he gets ready, and we're not going to know when, he, Jesus is going to come back. He's going to come back to claim his own. And those that are already dead in Christ and, and those who are alive on this earth shall meet him in the sky and shall be called up into that great place called heaven. Amen. Verse 11. In whom also we have attained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. Again, we have this word predestinated. I can kind of see where people have this thought process. But you think about this. There was this pre, 
the you know with the COVID nineteen, we don't have many sports that's coming on. But I noticed that the NBA is starting up in uh, this what they call the bubble in Orlando, and they're testing all these players daily for the virus, and they started up again. They're gonna have the playoffs there, and eventually they're gonna crown a champion, whoever wins. And it has been predestinated that whoever is the champion is going to get to take home what they call the Larry O'Brien Trophy. That's been predestinated, meaning it's already been decided that whoever wins all of their uh, series of games and is the NBA champion is going to walk away with this trophy. It's already been predestinated. The same type thing is what was predestinated. It has been predestinated by God for the church to enter into heaven, that we will be holy and blameless because we have Jesus Christ, because we are in Christ. We are part of his body, he being the head of the church, and we being the body of the church. And so anybody can be in the church. You just have to obey, and then you have to continue being faithful. And if you do that, then you're predestinated as well. But you can fall from grace. You can fall. You can leave the church. You can stop being, you can maybe come to the worship service, but you may not be faithful. You may just be putting on a show. You may not really be doing anything. You may not be studying your Bible. You may not be, uh, you know, you may uh, be doing bad things when people don't know. But the church is predestined to go to heaven. Verse 13, in whom you also trusted after you heard in the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Here we go. We have been given the Holy Spirit of promise. We're sealed with this. We are sealed when Jesus went back into the heavens he left the comforter here the holy spirit and when we uh, are baptized and faithful members we are sealed with this holy spirit of we have this promise of salvation we're sealed with this holy spirit when you see a capital s on spirit that means the holy spirit so we have this holy spirit of promise it says which is talking about the holy spirit is the earnest of our inheritance. Hey, this is a down payment until the redemption of this purchased possession. You know, I had this Coke bottle. This is kind of a down payment. And when I turn this in, I can redeem that. God is going to uh, allow us He's going to redeem us. We, we have this, are we going to redeem? I guess we have the Holy Spirit. And this is kind of a redemption that we can get into heaven right there. Verse 15, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, make him mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Paul was so thankful that these brethren had remained faithful. He had heard, he had been and, and uh, you know, with them before. And, you know, he had heard that they were still remaining faithful. And he loved the saints there. He says he's thinking and praying for them. Um, that, that the that the spirit see the little s on spirit there that means that's more of an attitude that that we will that, the, that we may be it's not the Holy Spirit that we will have this attitude of wisdom or this 
and, and the revelation, the knowledge of him, that we will know what to do, that we will, by studying the scriptures, we will, uh, God is revealing his uh, will for us and that we will know what to do to be uh, found faithful. And that's all you have to do. You have to just study the word of God for yourself. I mean, it's good to listen to uh, Bible studies such as this and sermons and, and go to church. And, and that's how you learn. But you also learn by studying on your own, by reading it for your own and making sense of it for yourself. And that's truly important. And I encourage you to do that. Um, Paul talks about here, uh, about mentioning them in his prayers. I know I, when I used to, and I still do, go down to Brazil, uh, visit many of the congregations down the Belo Horizonte area. And I have a great love for a lot of the brethren there. I've been down there about eight times. And uh, uh, I love it. I mean, you know, there was one time that I found that uh, there was a preacher there uh, that had, you know, great relationship with and everything. And uh, his wife and kid and, and uh, you know, they, he was just a strong, faithful man. And I had found out that he had cheated on his wife. And they got a divorce, and it 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 was really rough on the congregation there. And uh, later, uh, about a year or two later, I went back down there, and they had gotten back together. They had worked it out, uh, and you know I didn't see them when I got back down there that time, but uh, uh, and I haven't seen them since. I don't know where they they are worshiping somewhere, but I I haven't uh, been to. The, same place they had or whatever but anyways it was a heartbreaking situation so i know when, when paul talks about these that you know he's heard their faith and and that he's thinking about them praying for because i think about the, the, the saints there in Belo Horizonte, and that you know i have uh we have a couple missionaries that we support down there and i communicate with them and uh of course i'm the deacon over the uh mission work uh, uh and so I, i'm responsible for sending money uh down there to to one of them and the, we support another congregation and send uh, the money from our church down there to the other one but anyways I, I can understand what paul's saying here verse 18 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened enlightened rather that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. The eyes of understanding. You know, it helps us to be enlightened. When we read God's word, we understand it. Uh, and we understand that there's hope. We understand there's hope. If there was no hope, oh man, what, what a terrible place this world would be if you didn't have any hope of, of something better. You know, we have a hope of a place where there is no night there, where there is no suffering, no pain. It's a wonderful place called heaven. We have hope. The hope, of, the hope of our calling is these great riches that we have, these great riches that we're going to have. And it's, in, it's our inheritance because we are the adopted children of God because we are members of his church. And we are the saints. I know some people have a problem with calling them and say, well, I'm not a saint. Well, yeah, you are. If you're a Christian, you're a saint. Right? The saints... Uh, you know, I know in like the Catholic Church, they think, well, it was uh, St. Paul and St. whatever, you know, no. We're all saints. It refers to, when the Bible says saints, referring to faithful Christians. We call it church. Uh, those that are, uh, I think, 60 and older are senior saints. And we have a, sometimes we have a senior saints luncheon. 
and I can't wait till we can get together and have some of those fellowship meals again. Uh, and what is the exceeding, in verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? So the mighty power of God, it, it is, uh, you know, what for those of us that believe and obey, oh, it's great. It's a great thing that we have in Christ that we know that we're saved. And it's because of Christ's resurrection, when he was raised from the dead, that he went down, he, I'm, oh, he went up into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God right now. In verse 21, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named and not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. He hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. When you look at all the kings and queens and presidents and all those that are in power, whether it's demons or Satan himself, God is more powerful, whether it's angels, God is more powerful than all of them. He created all of them, and he has put Jesus far above all of those, at every name that is named, Jesus is over them. He's at the right hand of God. He said he's put all things at his feet, you know, there's some that don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But one day they will, because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, and they will be his footstool. They will be under him. And if those who, who have not obeyed, who those who have not have subjected themselves to Christ, that have refuse to be in the church, which he is the head over. Those who refuse that will get their punishment in the lake of fire called hell. That's right. We don't want to think about that. I hate thinking about hell. I really do. But what I love to think about is being a part of the church that's Christ's body, that we each look to build each other up. We look to, with each other with love. We look to each other uh, as, uh, well, listen, we're all in this together. We want everybody to go to heaven and we're trying to convince everybody to remain faithful. It's not that difficult. You can do it. We all can do it together. Thank you for attending the Bible class today. I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to studying Ephesians. It talks about a lot about the church and about Christ uh, being the, the head and the church, the body. And so look forward to this study. Thank you.